Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Beth. Uh, and today's video is all about baked blushes. Specifically, I have the new ones from Revi Beauty, which is Ali Glines uh, brand here on YouTube. So uh, I thought I would kind of compare these to some very popular blush formulas that are on the market. So I have obviously all of the Revi blushes and then I have uh, all of the Kosas uh, baked blushes that came out earlier this year. Uh, I also have the uh, the Essence uh, baked blushes. I have the full line of those and I have uh, most of the Hourglass blushes as well and some more Geller ones. So I have kind of a good spectrum of uh, the most popular high-end and low-end uh, baked blushes on the market. So I really just wanted to uh, play with these Revie blushes and kind of put them in that larger context and see if there's anything that makes these super special. Uh, I am a fan of Allie Glines. I'm subscribed to her, so I have no doubt that uh, these blushes will be fantastic. But uh, at the end of the day, it's all about whether it's worth your while to go out and spend your money on these, or if you already have something in your collection that will do the same thing, or maybe you'll prefer one of the other formulas that I will demo. So I've already gone through and swatched shades from those different formulas that I mentioned that I think will be comparable to these. Uh, so that will be kind of the first part of this video, and then the second part will be me doing kind of side-by-side -side, uh, comparisons so you can actually see uh, in real time how these compare. So uh, if that sounds good to you, make sure to like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's get into the swatches. So this is the swatch comparison part of the video. Uh, I'm filming on my iPhone in natural daylight. It's kind of overcast today, but uh, sometimes that can be good because there aren't any shadows. Uh, so as you can see here, I have the three blushes from Revy Beauty. I have all of the Essence Pure Nude baked blushes. I have all of the Kosas baked blushes, and I have most of the permanent hourglass blushes. Uh, I also have a Milani Luminoso. So that is kind of the big picture of what I will be comparing. And I already opened these uh, so I could just do some visual comparisons, um, but I haven't done any swatching. So I've kind of picked out the blushes from each brand that I thought might be closest. Uh, one thing to note, uh, so you are getting seven grams in the Revi, you also get seven grams in the Essence. Uh, the Kosas, you get 4.5 grams, so quite a bit less, and this is 4.2 grams. Uh, that is a full-size hourglass blush, and this one from Milani, you get 3.5 grams, uh, this is an older package, so I'm not sure if it's the same in the newer one. Okay, so those are the three shades. Uh, so I'll go through each of these. So let's start with Daydream. Uh, this is a peachy pink. This one, Paradise, is a toasted pink. And Oasis is a raspberry pink. I'll also quickly show you the blush brush, which I will use in the demo, but just so you get a nice kind of close up look at it. It's a bit smaller than I thought it would be for whatever reason. Uh, it will kind of fluff out a little bit as I use it and wash it, but uh, yeah, that is the brush, has a, a shiny gray and gold metallic handle. So anyway, we will come back to that, uh, but let's start off with Daydream. Uh, so for this one, I thought the closest shades uh, would be Essence Shimmery Rose and Essence uh, Bold Heart. And then from Kosas, uh, Blist is described as a peachy pink. This is also one of the shades in the little holiday gift set uh, that they have. Uh, I also thought I would compare it to Thrill. I love how the Kosas boxes tell you the shade, they give a color indication and a description, so that's really nice. Uh, Thrill and Hype, this one. That is a warm poppy pink. Uh, I'll also compare it to Milani Luminoso. 
and Hourglass. Uh, I'll compare it to Incandescent Electra, which is this middle shade here. I'm not sure if that one is still available or not. And then I also have the shade uh, Sublime Flush in this palette. So that is what we are going to be doing for Hourglass. Uh, so that's kind of everything I picked out to compare, but if you do have any specific requests, uh, just let me know. Uh, I have some Laura Geller shades, but not a lot. Uh, I do like the Laura Geller formula. So if you have any, so if you have any shade comparison requests, uh, just let me know. So that is Daydream, peachy pink. And then Essence Shimmery Rose is also described as a peachy pink. So Essence, as you know, is a very affordable drugstore brand. It looks like that is going to be a bit lighter, the Shimmery Rose shade. Uh, so I was able to kind of pick up the entire line <laughs> without breaking the bank. Uh, and I picked Kosas and Hourglass because uh, they are very popular baked blushes. So neither one of those, I wonder what happens if I kind of blend a little bit. I think that gets us a tad bit closer, but on the whole, I think the Ravi is leaning a little bit more into the peach and these two are a little bit more pink. So going into Kosas Blist, I need to order another makeup spatula because I feel like I'm always looking for it uh, to help with opening boxes. Um, but anyway, okay, so this is the shade Blist in their Blushes Life. You can also use either some tweezers or a spatula to help um, open up the actual component. Uh, I do like this package. You can see it's definitely quite a bit smaller. I'm really tempted to get the holiday set even though I already have all of the shades. So again, I think that is leaning a little bit more pink. I have kind of an obsession with small things. I'm just really curious how small they are. I'm sure they would be really good for travel. Okay, so this is the shade Hype. Again, that's even more pink. And then finally, the shade Thrill. I think this is described as a blood orange, so it's definitely gonna go out of the pink territory, hopefully, but it might be too vibrant. I think tone-wise, it's decently close, but again, it does have more vibrancy to it. So far, I think the two blended essence shades are actually the closest. So that's all of the Kosas shades. Uh, so next up, I'll do Milani Luminoso. This one I think has, the Ravi has a tad bit more of kind of a salmon pink quality to it. This one is leaning a little bit firmly or more firmly into the peach. All right, so then let's look at Hourglass Incandescent Electra. I think I do have a full size of this, but this one is from the blush palette. Again, this one has a tad bit more pink. This one is a tad bit more, more muted, I guess. And then finally, I will swatch Sublime Flush. So this is one of the permanent shades, although I do have it in this palette. That might be the closest. What do you guys think? That one at the top and that one at the bottom? I'd say that one's a tad bit deeper, but tone-wise, I think they're 
pretty similar. Let me just swatch just a tad bit closer to, this is going to be a very awkward swatch. So I think, I think these two are both pretty close. I'm sorry, this is going to give me sore elbow if I keep doing it that way. All right, so let's just put those three on my hand. So this is Sublime Flush. This is Daydream. I do like the Ravi components. I think they look very nice. Uh, they feel decently weighted. And then I'll combine the two Essence blushes. I guess the good news is if you already have the Essence blushes, obviously, um, but also you could buy both of these and get the same result for, I want to say Shimmery Heart, not that one, Shimmery Rose, Bold Heart. Uh, so I'll swatch these two again. Uh, these don't have that kind of marbling effect to them, but you are getting two separate shades. Uh, I don't know the best way to combine these. Okay. So yeah, what do you guys think? Did I dupe it? I might, I might do both of those the hourglass and the essence on the cheek. Because those both look quite similar. I'd say looking at it, the essence might even be closer. Interesting. All right, so I think it was the next day I filmed this clip, but uh, obviously it was a much sunnier day. But what I wanted to do was swatch uh, one of the Laura Geller blushes that I swatched later in the video. Uh, I wanted to compare it to Daydream because I think I swatched it against either Paradise or Oasis. And as you can see, it's actually pretty close to Daydream in terms of the color. Uh, the Lori Geller is going to be much more shimmery. So I'm going to add that to uh, my kind of on face swatch comparison as well. Okay, so let's take a look at the next Ravi shade, which is Paradise. This is a toasted pink. And the most similar that I saw, I wanted to look at Kosas Dreamland, which is a rosy bronze. Swoon, which is a pinky brown mauve or mauve. Uh, Essence, Berry Cheeks, which is this one. And Rosy Rosewood, which is this one right here. Uh, and then I also have Hourglass Luminous Flush, which is in this palette again. Tell you, it was such a good palette. I don't know why they didn't make it permanent. Okay, so let's swatch the Ravi now that I've given my arm a chance to dry. So that is described as a toasted pink. Very pretty. So for Kosas Dreamland, this is a rosy bronze. A tad bit lighter. And then Swoon, this is a pinky brown mauve. Make sure I'm in frame. Much more pink. So the Ravi is going to be more neutral compared to those other two. And then let's look at Essence Berry Cheeks. I'll also compare this to the, the last Ravi blush. This is probably going to be too berry. Yeah. And then rosewood. That one's not too far off. It's almost like if I combined that first Kosas and the 
Essence one, Rosie Rosewood and Dreamland, they would kind of get to that. But the Kosas, you are getting less product. I think the price point is just around the Ravi. Uh, so I don't know that there's really any benefit to trying uh, that approach. Okay, so Luminous Flush. And again, that is much more pink. So I think, I think Rosy Rosewood and Kosas Rosy Bronze are going to be the closest. And I only had, I guess, five shades to compare to that Ravi shade. Okay, so for the last one here, there's only four shades that I thought were close. This is going to be a tad bit deeper for my skin tone. So I wanted to compare Berry Cheeks from Essence again. And then Kosas Euphoria is a pinky mauve. And then Kosas Adrenaline. I think by the end of this, I will have swatched all Kosas blushes except for Butterflies, uh, which is the cool baby pink. Uh, that one is going to be one of the ones in the kit in addition to, I think, Euphoria and Blist. So I might swatch those at the end really quickly. Uh, and then the Hourglass blush I have to compare, this was from last year's Holiday Palette, but this is a permanent shade. Uh, so Diffused Heat. And this was the Jellyfish palette, but I have it in the owl packaging. Uh, so this one down here is Diffused Heat. So I thought the base color without the kind of yellow marbling was perhaps a little similar. Uh, so we'll see how that looks. Okay, so let's go into Oasis, Raspberry Pink. And then Kosas Euphoria. Now it's pink, that one is more mauve. Uh, this one in Adrenaline. A little bit warmer, not quite as cool. Did I skip over the Essence one? This is Berry Cheeks. it's getting closer. Uh, let me swatch this one. Yeah, that's way off. I mean, the thing about the hourglass blushes is that they're a little bit more distinct in terms of the blush pigment and the kind of ambient lighting powder pigment, so sometimes the color that you get will be, will vary a lot between palettes. Uh, that one's not very close. That one is Rose Fusion from the same palette. Uh, let me swatch Luminous Flush again. Yeah, still not quite as like vibrant magenta. So this one is tough. Um, I think I might have to go back and check the footage to remember which one is which. I'm kind of leaning towards that one, maybe. I think that might be the Essence shade. I'll go ahead and swatch this one. I think this one is not available. This is Iridescent Flash. I'm just kind of looking for, I think that one's a tad bit closer. Okay, so I just wanted to clear uh, this up because I think I misspoke. So uh, what I was looking at, so there's the ambient lighting blush, which is what I was referencing. Uh, I didn't realize that Hourglass had separated out the ambient strobe lighting blushes, which are down here. Uh, so there's four additional shades. So I think iridescent blush is what I was just talking about. So it is available, or at least should be at some point. Yeah, I just wanted to make that clear. 
And also, I don't know if this is relevant because I haven't scrutinized it too closely, uh, but since the time I filmed what you're watching now, uh, they have released the other Barney's palettes, I believe. So I'm not sure where those are. Okay, so we have volume two and volume three. Uh, so I'll just hover here for a second. I think I mentioned Sublime Flush, uh, which is a permanent shade. None of these are jogging my memory. But anyway, just wanted to mention that as well. And then I have a couple Laura Geller blushes that I pulled out. I feel like I might have more somewhere else. This is Pink Buttercream. I don't think this is going to work. That one might actually be closer to the Paradise or Daydream. A little bit darker than Paradise, I think. And same with Daydream. Like these, there doesn't seem to be as big a difference. More of a tone than a depth, I guess. Uh, what was the other Laura Geller one here? So this one is Tropic Hues. Yeah, that one doesn't work either. Uh, so I don't think I have anything super close. Uh, if you do have any specific comparison requests, uh, just let me know and I can see if I have a particular shade that you're interested in. Uh, let me go ahead and swatch the three that are in that Kosas kit. So we are looking at Blist, Euphoria, and Butterflies. This is not a shade of blush that I typically go for, this kind of bright, bright pink. Uh, so next up is Blist. And then finally, Euphoria. So those are the three that's going to be in the kit. Uh, Euphoria is probably my favorite out of those three, just because that's the tone of blush that I typically go for. Not as much into the peachy shades or the bright pink, like I said. So hopefully this addresses the most popular <laughs> blushes on the market, but again, if you do have any specific uh, comparison requests, just let me know down below and I'll put those up on either Instagram or the community page. Okay, so now you have a good overview of the shades that we'll be talking about. Uh, let's go to, okay, so we'll start off with Daydream. So this is the peachy pink shade. And it's been several days since I filmed that swatch footage. I have already edited it and I've watched it a couple times now. So I have a good idea of everything I said, but uh, like I said, it's been a little while now. So uh, I also picked up the blush brush that I'll be applying these with. And uh, just to keep things fair, I'm going to use the same brush for all the products. I do have my uh, Sigma Switch here. So I'll be cleaning off the brush in between swatches, but uh, just to keep things kind of as consistent as possible. So I think for the sake of consistency, I will apply the review blushes to the right cheek and then all of the other blushes will be on the left. Uh, so just going in here, haven't applied these on the cheek yet. And I do have uh, foundation and powder. I used the uh, Dior foundation stick and the Charlotte Tilbury powder. Uh, obviously, I'll be removing a lot of products, so I wanted to keep it simple. And uh, also so that you are able to get a true read of the blush without bronzer, contour, that kind of thing. So uh, this is a pretty soft blush on my skin tone. You can see I am building it up. And I did watch Ali's uh, video kind of introducing these products. Uh, I do also have all of her, uh, what are they called? Effortless lips. So for this one, she recommended uh, Peony or Poppy. 
So I'm just going to quickly apply one of those because my lips are feeling a little dry. Uh, so these are her very slim style lipsticks. And just by looking at the color indicator on the bottom, I think I'll prefer peony. So I will apply that one. So. Very nice, comfortable formula. So just to have a little bit of comfort on the lips, I'm not specifically reviewing the effortless lips, but they are very nice. Uh, so uh, I said in the kind of swatch footage that Shimmery Rose and Bold Heart, I thought were the closest to uh, Daydream. So these two colors combined. And these are going to be a single color. They're not that kind of marbleized, variegated texture of the Revi. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of dip my brush into both of those once and uh, we'll go in on this side. So it's not as convenient to do this, but if you do happen to have both shades, it might be worth of trying out for yourself. So yeah, I'd say both are looking pretty neutral on the cheek. I'm just going back in with a little bit more. So I just kind of tapped in again. And I'd say it's a little bit easier to build the essence formula. So like I said, I think I think that's a pretty good dupe. I think you are even getting maybe a little bit more pigment out of the essence. So especially if you have a deeper complexion because you can kind of dip more into the bolder color. I think maybe look at the essence a little bit more. Uh, but all very pretty, pretty shades on the skin. Okay, so that is it for essence. Uh, I also have an Hourglass and a Laura Geller uh, shade to swatch. Okay, so I've removed the makeup from my left side and reapplied my foundation and powder. Uh, so next up, let's try the Hourglass blush in Sublime Flush. Uh, I have it in this holiday palette, so that would be this shade down here. Uh, but it is a permanent shade, and it is also in uh, one of the Barney's palettes, I believe. So... Uh, this brush does fit decently well. I'm trying to just get an even application on the brush. Uh, so let's go in on the left cheek. Dipping in again. Again, I did all these swatches beforehand. This is a very kind of light blush. So uh, the last blush that we'll cover, I think is going to be the one best suited for deeper complexions. I do kind of wish that there was a little bit more of a distinction between the first and the second shades in the review line. Uh, but just as she did with the effortless lips, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if she expanded. So yeah, I think, I think those are both reading quite similarly on the cheek. And this Dior foundation, as you can see, I still have freckles and everything coming through. It does cancel out my redness, but it's not like a full coverage uh, foundation. So again, if you have the Hourglass Sublime Blush or either of the Essence blushes, I'd say you're probably, you're probably fine skipping out on the Ruby blush. Uh, let's go to the Laura Geller one. Uh, so the last blush I wanted to compare to Daydream is the Laura Geller blush in Tropic Hues. And as you probably saw in the swatches, uh, this is, I think, where I'm expecting maybe the most of a difference, just because there seems to be quite a bit more shimmer. So let's see how that translates onto the cheek. So 
So just talking a little bit about skin type, I do have drier skin. I'd say I have some texture on my cheeks, but not so much that it's something I'm like overly concerned about. I, I am seeing a little bit more, I think, of a kind of highlighted effect there, uh, but still, I think this one did build up pigment a little bit better too. So again, I think it just kind of comes down to preference. So if you do have the Laura Geller, maybe just pull that out and see if you like how it looks, if you prefer it to be a little bit less pigmented or less shimmery. And then you can decide at that point whether the Revie blush is something you would be interested in. So yeah, that is the Revie and that is the Laura Geller. All right, so now I'm removing both sides because we're moving on to the next Revie blush. Keep in mind as we go through this that I am removing the makeup on my left side kind of twice or three times as often. So there's a chance the, the skin could get a little irritated, but I'm trying to be kind of gentle with it. Uh, this is just a damp makeup eraser. So just kind of removing from the cheek area. And then I'm going in with the Make Reverse Emulsion, which is a very kind of hydrating prep layer that I like to use. Uh, and I used it before I applied any makeup today, but just making sure the skin stays nice and happy. And then the Dior Foundation Stick. I just find that foundation sticks are really easy, especially when I'm kind of removing makeup and reapplying it in this way. So just kind of gotting that on and then taking a BK 106 brush and blending. See how quickly that blends. And then just taking the, the dregs of my Charlotte Tilbury powder here that I'm trying to use up and my BK 103 brush, swirling that around just to make sure I have a set base so the blushes don't kind of stick to it. Okay, so there we are back more or less to kind of ground zero. Uh, so let's take the next review blush, which is Paradise. I guess I might as well remove the lip color as well. Uh, so she had recommended Dahlia or Lily. Okay, so again, we have a little bit more of a beige option, a little bit more of a pinkier one. Uh, I will wear Lily in honor of my niece, although I would probably go for Dahlia otherwise. Uh, so I think this is one of the shades from her initial line. Uh, Dahlia might have been the expansion. So much more of a nude color. Uh, so let's go into Paradise, which she describes as a toasted pink. So I only have, I think, two shades maybe to compare this to. So if I were just purchasing this as kind of a normal consumer, uh, this is probably the shade I would have gravitated towards the most. So I'd say these definitely are kind of your everyday buildable blush, which I think kind of fits in with the overall aesthetic and approach to her makeup line, kind of this effortless lips formula, like I mentioned. Uh, it's meant to be something that you can just kind of keep in your handbag, apply on the go. So this is a nice kind of everyday, you can kind of apply it without too much care. I just think I'm speaking from my skin tone and Allie is near my skin tone. I think she might be a smidge darker, but again, I think the deepest shade is really what's going to work best for deeper complexions. Okay, so for this one, we have the shade Rosy Rosewood from Essence. And again, I would venture to say that maybe going to be a little bit more pigmented than the Revie. Maybe a smidge pinker. The thing about blushes is that they are 
generally formulated to be less pigmented than eyeshadows and you're kind of shearing them out and blending them across a wider area. So any differences in shade or finish are going to be a little less noticeable, especially if you're applying over a light or medium base like I am. So I'd say I enjoy baked blushes generally because you can get a more kind of effortless look with them. Uh, I'm just going to apply a little bit more of the Paradise shade. So again, this exercise is just to, you know, kind of see what is maybe worth your while if you already have certain things. So I feel like I'm having kind of deja vu from my hourglass palette video. Uh, not only am I removing my makeup multiple times, but again, like when you get things on the face, they just don't always look that different. Uh, so that is Essence Rosy Rosewood. And then I also wanted to look at Kosas Dreamland. So I think this is the first Kosas blush I'm swatching. Okay, so we are back with Kosas Dreamland. I might swatch Swoon as well. I kind of had that in parentheses, so. Uh, let's see. So taking the same brush again, and again, this is going to be a smaller component. I do like this brush now that I'm using it. I wasn't quite sure if I would like the size, but I think what I liked in her video and how she was describing it is this curvature to it, kind of being able to lay it I don't know, kind of hold it vertically, if that makes sense. So that is Dreamland. I don't know if it's even worth swatching Swoon. Like I said, I think you're getting a very similar effect on both cheeks. So try and get as close as I can so you can see any kind of texture or anything, but but yeah, so far I'm not seeing a lot of differences in these shades that I happen to put together anyway. Okay, so I think, I think I'm going to move on to Oasis because I just don't really see much of a difference there. Okay, so finally we are venturing into Oasis and I do have another lip pairing for this blush as well. Uh, so for this one, she recommends either Tulip or Rose, which I'd say are my two favorite flowers. Rose for scent and Tulip for appearance. So I'm going to do Tulip just because it looks a little bit lighter and I don't want it to pull too much focus from the actual uh, blush. I will say I, I appreciate this component. I always feel a little nervous when I'm pulling it out, like I'm going to, I don't know, take off the top of the bullet. So I guess just make sure that you kind of twist it down when you're done applying. It would have been nice if they were magnetic, but I'm sure that would have been a lot more expensive. So really, really nice balmy texture, brighter pink. Uh, okay, so let's go into Oasis. So she describes this as a raspberry pink. And again, I think it's a little telling that all of the blush shades she describes end in pink. So we have a toasted pink, a peachy pink, and a raspberry pink. So I think these are kind of maybe more universally flattering shades. Uh, she wanted to kind of capture as big a demographic as possible. Uh, but... Again, it would have been nice if she had maybe ventured into something a little bit different, uh, but that may not square with the kind of, I don't know, goal of the brand or the realities of having a small business. So this is Oasis and I am trying to be a little bit more cautious in applying it. You can see I kind of tapped it off on my arm a little bit, just trying to kind of 
get as even an application as possible. So yeah, obviously a lot brighter on this one. So if you do have a deeper complexion, I'd say this is definitely where you want to go. It's still pretty, pretty diffused, I would say though. I've certainly applied more pigmented blushes that kind of read a little bit louder um, when they're applied. Okay, so that is Oasis, and I wanted to compare that one to Essence Berry Cheeks, which is this one right here. So I'd say both of these just take a little bit more care to apply due to the depth of the color. I'd say the Revy one is actually, it has a tad bit more of kind of a brighter pink quality to it. A little bit more magenta. This one's a little bit more, I don't know, cranberry maybe. I don't know if I ended up getting some down here. Uh, so yeah, so I would not, again, recommend this one as probably the first choice. If you have my skin tone. So if you do happen to have the Essence Blush, maybe just dig that one out of your collection just to kind of see how you like a blush of that kind of pigment level. So yeah, I'd say those don't look as similar on the skin. Uh, so we have one more hourglass blush. Okay, so I removed that cheek, obviously. I think I might try, was it the rose shade? I think this one has a little bit too much coral in it. I just want to see what the rose looks like. So this is going to be more of a sheer red. That's really bright. I, I feel like she needs more of a true pink or maybe just one of the other shades I'd like better with this blush. But yeah, I don't know that I like either of these, especially with that particular shade, at least on my skin tone. Okay, so the last blush here from Hourglass is the Iridescent Flash, which is this one right here. So uh, one pro to the Hourglass blushes, uh, you are getting less product, uh, as I mentioned, but uh, they do have a mirror. So if that's important to you, that's worth noting. Uh, they are going to be more expensive, of course, as well. So let's go in with iridescent flash. So I think that's a tad bit closer. It's still not maybe quite as bright pink, but again, if you do have that shade in your collection, maybe, maybe pull it out just to see how you like it. But yeah, I think out of the three review blushes, this is the one that I wasn't quite able to dupe because it's not really the best shade for my skin tone that makes sense. I would have less kind of shades in my collection to compare it to. Uh, but hopefully this is helpful information nevertheless. Uh, the, the purpose of this video isn't to kind of dump on the review blushes. I think they're nice, beautiful blushes. Uh, I would say if you're looking for the cheapest option, obviously Essence is the way to go. I think Essence makes a very good baked blush formula. If you want something that feels a little bit more luxurious and high-end or you just want to support Ally, then I think these are a great buy, especially kind of comparing cost per gram 
to Hourglass and Kosas. But really the question I was just trying to answer was, is it worth running out and buying these if you already have some of these other shades that I've mentioned? Uh, so as I've said before, let me know if you have any additional comparison requests and I can try to do some swatch comparisons on Instagram or on the community page. And until next time, I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe and I will talk to you soon. Bye.